Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I built my acetone smoother to get results from this to this. The whole idea behind this project was to create a reliable and safe way to smooth 3D printed parts without spending a fortune on commercial equipment. Here I've got a 3D model that shows all the parts in detail. One very important thing is to use real glass. At first I thought about using acrylic, but it turns out acrylic is extremely sensitive to acetone vapors. It can crack, turn cloudy or even completely fall apart after just a short time of exposure. Real glass on the other hand is not only much more resistant, it's usually even cheaper and easier to get in the right size. I got this glass cylinder from eBay as a hot dog maker glass replacement for just 20 euros. For the lid I'm using a steel plate because it's corrosion resistant. The heating plate itself is stainless steel and I glued it in with epoxy. The entire casing is 3D printed from PLA, while the glass fixture is made from PETG so it can take advantage of its higher melting point and greater durability compared to PLA. To keep everything nice and cool I'm using four 40mm fans. Here I'm equipping them with M3 nuts to make sure they stay secured inside the casing. For power input I'm using 230 volts EU standard AC current. This is the main on off switch for the whole setup. Now I'm securing the base plate to the casing. And here I'm installing the 12 volt controller for the fans in the chamber. This other part is the 230 volt voltage controller that lets me adjust the temperature of the heating plate very precisely. And here I'm installing the 40mm 12V fans. Two of them are blowing inward, while the other two are blowing outward. I didn't have the necessary space to insulate the heating plate from underneath, so it's very important to get the heat out of the casing effectively.
After securing all the cables neatly to the components, I moved on to the heating plate. Now I'm connecting the plate to the rest of the system. and then added the glass cylinder to finish off the chamber. As you can see, the plate heats up nicely to around 60 degrees Celsius or about 140 degrees Fahrenheit which is the perfect temperature for acetone since it evaporates at about 56 degrees Celsius or about 133 degrees Fahrenheit. At this range, the acetone produces a stable amount of vapor without boiling too violently. As you can see here, the plate gets quite hot from the underside, which makes the fans an absolute necessity to prevent overheating. I actually forgot to add the ground cable to the plate, which is very important for safety in case of a short circuit. Epoxy is the only affordable glue I could find that's resistant to hot acetone, so that's what I went with. I'm using cheap 2K epoxy for laminating tables, which is not ideal, but it works well enough if I use the chamber for not longer than about 30 minutes at a time. For longer runs, I probably recommend looking into higher grade epoxy or even mechanical fastening, but for now this solution is perfectly fine. To secure the propeller in the chamber, I'm using a big screw and a washer plate to hold it in place and a magnet to keep it secured on the top. This way the part doesn't move around or tip over while it's being exposed to the vapor cloud.
Now for the fun part. After adding the acetone, you can immediately see it evaporating to form a really aggressive vapor cloud that starts with smoothing out my propeller, which I printed from ASA. To get the best results, I sanded the propeller first to achieve a at least somewhat smooth surface, because the acetone can't fully fix rough layer lines by itself. This process also works well with ABS, but not PLA or PETG, since those plastics don't react to acetone in the same way. I think the results look pretty good already, though I could probably have left it in it just a little bit longer for an even shinier finish. Either way, the surface feels smoother, looks much more professional, and overall, the part is a lot closer to an ejected molded finish. Thanks for watching.